worship at St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Syracuse, New York. And maybe you can hear me better if I turn on the microphone. There we go. Can you hear me now? Welcome to worship as we celebrate this second Sunday in Advent, a time of preparation for the coming of Jesus' birth. Whether you're worshiping with us in person or online, please know that however you've joined us, your presence is always enriching our time together as we worship. Forerunners and messengers advance the advent of our God while John the baptizer's voice in the wilderness may be the principal focus of the day. Malachi's prophecy could easily herald the coming of Christ as forerunner of the Lord's hosts. Finally, all the baptized are called to participate in the sharing of the gospel. In doing so, we prepare the way for the coming of Jesus and assist all people in capturing a vision of the salvation of God. I invite you now into a time of confession and forgiveness and invite you to stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We fall in our fall and temptation. We find our sense of self in the material realm. We fear those who divert ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. 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 Our gathering hymn, oh, we're going to light the Advent wreath, that's true. And um, Greg and I will do that. I'll light it and you do the prayer from over there. But before we light, we will sing verse 2 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs> Blessed, bless us as we light the candles on this wreath, 
Baptize us with the fire of your Spirit, that we may be a light shining in the darkness, welcoming others as Christ has welcomed us, for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us sing the gathering hymn, hymn number 264, for those of you with hymnals, 264, Prepare the Royal Highway. We'll be singing stanzas one, three, and four. reading from Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant is whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of ours, of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like refiner's fire, like fuller's silk. He will sit as a refiner and purify of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem 
will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old as and as in former years. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Instead of a psalm this morning, we'll be reading responsibly from the first chapter of Luke. As always, I will begin with the even verses, and you may follow with the odd verses. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You, are you have raised up for us the mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. To show, to show mercy, mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free, free to, to worship, worship you without, without fear, fear, holy and righteous before you, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way. To, to give, give God's, God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness, and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. A reading from Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began from the f I am confident of this that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Shall be filled and every mountain shall be made low, 
and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. My sermon for this morning was inspired by a Dear John letter of sorts. I've been thinking about writing such a letter for my sermon today, wondering who it should come from and when in John's life it would be written. Then I found just such a letter online, and I realized that this is the one I needed to share with you today. The article was written by best-selling Christian novelist and award-winning author Trisha Boyer. The title is Dear John, a letter to John the Baptist. As you listen, you might want to imagine that God has written this letter to you. What comes to mind? How does it make you feel? Let's find out. Dear John, tomorrow is your birthday, and I just wanted to write and tell you what type of world you'll find yourself in. It's a dark place, to be certain. For 400 years, I've chosen to be silent. There have been no prophecies. There have been no dreams. I gave my people a chance to try to do things their way. That's what they wanted, isn't it? They say they're serving me with all their rituals and rules, but their hearts are as locked tight and as sealed up as a water jug. Nothing's going in, and nothing fresh and living is coming out. But among the self-protected people, there are some faithful ones like your parents, Zachariah and Elizabeth. They are righteous before me, and they live their lives blamelessly. They follow my rules, but more importantly, I see their hearts. I've also seen their tears. I've captured all of Elizabeth's tears in a bottle as she's prayed for a child, as she's dreamed of a son. She's been so brave, forcing a smile at each new pregnancy announcement from the women in her village. And in her darkest moments, when Elizabeth dares to allow the softest whispered prayer to escape her lips, I take joy in dropping down and wrapping my arms of love around her. I allow my spirit to whisper, just you wait and see what I have in store. The world isn't without hope, even though it may appear that way through the eyes of those who are desperate. I'm using your parents, you see, both well advanced in years, to start the show. I have to wait. You see, I needed mature parents who've seen the ups and downs of life to be able to handle the ups and downs of raising you. Through a messenger, I've told your father that your name will be John, and you will be great in my sight. I really need you to be. You see, you're Act One. You're the warm-up number for the greatest show on earth. An impressive calling for one who hasn't even taken his first breath yet, don't you think? Remember that moment when you were still being formed and knitted and you felt a touch of heaven even within the dark encasing of your womb home? That was me. And at the same time, my spirit was being formed and fitted within the human flesh of a young girl named Mary. The great I am, 
being multiplied in molecules and follicles? Impossible? One would think so. But in truth, it's just the beginning of a million impossibilities that those who get within arm's reach of my son will experience. The show is able to start because of the faithfulness of a childish, childless couple. Your dad, he had a hard time believing and accepting everything at first, mostly because Zachariah has been afraid to get his hopes up, both for a son and for a spiritual awakening. In heaven's mercy, he is receiving both. But the time has come. Tomorrow's the day. You will be born. And even before your wing, my son will come. My own son. Dear John, this letter is a promise of good intentions. I will never leave you or forsake you. I have called you, and you are mine. I'm giving you a challenging task to do, but I'm also giving you parents who will help prepare your heart so you will walk in obedience just as they do. They will be examples of the type of faithfulness you are to live. Learn from them. They've done a fine job so far at listening to me. And I am ready to get the show on the road. For your sake. For theirs. And for the world's. Forever. Loving you. God. So it seems that John has a lot to live up to, doesn't it? He's born to be the opening act for Jesus, God's own son. He was sent to prepare the crowd, to help them prepare for the greatest event of all, the birth of Emmanuel, God with us, in a fragile little baby asleep on the hay, in a young boy who worried his parents because he stayed behind in the temple for some conversation with a few amazed rabbis, in a young man turning water into wine because his mother said so, in a savior unlike any the world has ever imagined. The great I am comes to us. Always has, always will. And because of Jesus, we're able to know and to have a relationship with God. We're able to trust in God's promise of love and redemption. We're able to live in the surety of God's grace and forgiveness. We're able to count on God's presence not only in a tiny baby or up on a cross, but also in the world around us, always working in, through, and for us all. God calls us, just like so many other unlikely messengers over the centuries, just as God called an elderly, childless couple to bear and raise a son named John, who would become a radical zealot preaching difficult news for many people to hear, just as Mary was called to bear God's own self within her womb. None of them really knew what they were getting themselves into, but they responded to God's call, each in his or her own way. And this, my brothers and sisters, is what God asks of us to respond, each in our own way. To respond by using our own gifts and talents, whatever 
they may be, to respond by sharing our blessings, however we're able. On this day, as we remember John the Baptist and his message to prepare the way, we're reminded once more of God's love for us. We're reminded that God is truly with us in every circumstance and event. In the most ordinary and mundane moments and in the most extraordinary ones as well. Such news is far too important to keep to ourselves, which is why God calls us. It's why God calls on each of us to be messengers of this good news, to share it, to live it, to take an active role in God's loving work in the world, to join John the Baptist's cry, proclaiming that the Lord is near. So on this day and always let us rejoice and prepare for Christ to come and to enter here, today, now, and always. Amen. Our hymn of the day is on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry. Hymn number 245. We'll be singing stanzas one, two, and five, and I invite you to stand as you're able. places that yearn for God's presence. After the words, hear us, O God, you may respond, your mercy is great. You send messengers into the world to proclaim the day of your coming. Make our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay preachers confident in their preaching that their words and our lives witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send your spirit to all living creatures that are in danger. Provide them with shelter and care and bring us into right relationship with the earth that you create and call good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send leaders to our nations, cities, schools, and businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents, spouses, and loved ones, immigrants, the imprisoned, those living in poverty, and all who are oppressed. Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Send your servant to care for those who suffer. Use our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, or ill, especially those on our prayer list and those we offer now 
out loud or in our hearts. Grant them healing and wholeness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send prophets to speak difficult truths, even when they are poorly received. Embolden those who ask hard questions and challenge accepted ways. And still in our youth and elders alike, a passion for pointing to Jesus in all things. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We remember your saints, both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered. Confident that your work will be complete, we live in faith until the day of your coming. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We're not quite able to shake hands and offer hugs just yet, but we can and should offer a sign of God's peace to others. Whether we're offering a wave, a smile, a text message, an email, or a card, let us reach out to others, offering the love and peace of God for us all. Please be seated. God works in us, through us, and through our giving to support the ministries of God in our church, including the care of those in need. If you need assistance of any kind, please let Pastor Deb know. If you have a stable income and can give even a little bit more, we deeply appreciate your generosity. Let us be a blessing for others as Christ has been a blessing for us all.
God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal through Jesus Christ, our pathway and our peace. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us. 
our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now I invite you to get your little communion kit out. Peel back the top layer to reveal the wafer and put it in your hand. Then peel back the bottom layer to reveal the juice and hold them up when you're ready so that I will know everyone is ready to share this meal. this table by the Spirit's power form us to be bearers of your word sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all through Christ Jesus our host and our guest amen, amen. amen. and now it's time for a couple of announcements of course we've been broadcasting live on Facebook live this morning on the video is saved and uploaded to our Facebook page and then it will be later uploaded to YouTube. I had a little trouble with last week's, um, so I'm not able to upload that one, but I feel confident that I'll be able to upload this one uh, this week. So if you know somebody who would like to watch it on YouTube, please let them know. If you or someone you know could benefit from pastoral care or contact, please let me know. Either Greg or I will reach out however we're able and uh, get in touch with them. Since nearly 100% of our congregation has been vaccinated against COVID-19, we continue to recommend that each person does what makes them feel the safest. Whether it's worshiping with us in person or online, however you're able to participate we appreciate your presence. On December 19th, we will have our first coffee hour since the beginning of COVID. Goodies will be individually wrapped. It will be a special Christmas gathering with coffee and such taking place right after worship and everyone is invited. Are there any other announcements? Great. Uh, just to remind everyone of our Christmas Eve worship schedule at 4 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Absolutely. Christmas Eve worship, Friday the 24th, is at 4 p.m. here at St. Stephen. Um, there will be a special children's message. It will be a service of the word. And then at 10 p.m. at St. Paul's, there will be a service with Holy Communion. 
um, without a children's message. So I will be at both, and I hope to see all of you at at least one. Um, anything else? Point set us. Point set us. Point set us. <laughs> Pardon? Um, Alter Guild Christmas Eve poinsettias. Um, we are suggesting a donation of three dollars per name, um, but we will then sh share those poinsettias with our shut-ins after the service. Right. All right. Any other? Blessings in the Backpack has a couple of volunteer um, openings. It's all in the bulletin. In the announcements. In the sheet. announcements. So I don't want to spend a lot more time on, on anything, but please read those. Those are all very good. Thank yeah, the you. announcement sheets are sent to everybody via email or mail. And we snail mail, post office mail. We've also been putting copies uh, near the door for those of you who would like to pick one up. So be sure you did. If there are no other announcements, I invite you to stand for the blessing as you're able. The God of hope fills us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is Let Justice Flow Like Streams. It's pretty short, so we'll sing the whole thing. <laughs> Peace, Christ is near. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.